Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much this video is going to be about what if the United States dollar loses its reserve currency status? So, Lord willing, you are edified by this lesson. Now, concerning Jacob's trouble, you're going to have multiple things simultaneously happening at the same time that's going to usher in an economic collapse of America as well as the whole world. All right. And concerning Jacob's trouble, with well, Jacob's trouble consists of what? Persecution of Hebrew Israelites worldwide. You know, you have something called Project Megiddo, which they have us labeled there as a hate group. You have the Southern um, Poverty Law Center. You know, they also labeled us a hate group. You have the King Alpha plan. You have the Rex 84 plan, which that's the same thing, different names. But all these things, it deals with the persecution of Hebrew Israelites, all right? Individuals that don't comply with the New World Order agenda. And the end game of the New World Order agenda is to cause a global economic collapse, all right? And that can happen through a major false flag attack in the form of a cyber attack in order to cause a reset of the system and issue a digital cashless society along with a one world currency in the form of CBDC. Now, you have a lot of insiders such as Aaron Russo and plenty of other um, men. They've been telling you that the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant, these chips is going to be linked to your digital wallet. It's going to be linked to the CBDC. The CBDC is programmable money, meaning that it could be programmed on a device. What device would that be? According to biblical prophecy, it would be on an RFID chip implant also known as the brain chip implant because it's going to function the same under this system all right so jacob's trouble it deals with a lot you know the downfall of society you know civil war a, a global recession so all these things is going to be happening at the same time in order to have the solution to bring forth a new system which is a part of their 2030 agenda all right so you're going to have that going on and What's going to also happen is the United States dollar is going to lose its power. It's going to lose, you know, um, it's not going to be a legal tender anymore because the CBDC is designed to replace the U.S. dollar according to their 2030 agenda. All right. So, Lord willing, you are edified by this lesson. So now we're going to get into reserve currency explained. Right. So let's get into it. What is a reserve currency? These things you need to know according to Bible prophecy, right? It says many central banks of countries in the world hold large quantities of reserve currency. A reserve currency refers to a strong currency, often a foreign currency used for international trade and to settle international debts and obligations. Large financial institutions also hold significant quantity of reserve currency for investment purpose. Aside from foreign currency, a country's reserve currency can also be made of gold and oil, which are used for international transactions. Right. So it says, how does a reserve currency work? It says reserve currency is used in global economy. Countries hold large reserve currency through central banks in order to influence domestic exchange rate and mitigate exchange rate risk while trans transactioning with other countries. So when they do trade internationally, they're using the U.S. dollar. All right. Just to sum that up for you. It says many countries have been holding the U.S. dollar has their prim primary reserve currency as far back as 1944. In addition to the U.S. dollar, 
Some countries hold gold and oil in their reserve currency. Reserve currency is an important concept in international trade. Countries use the amount in the reserve currency to settle international obligations and make trades. All right. So now I'm going to read one more paragraph on this article. It says how the U.S. dollar became the world's reserve currency. Now let's get into a little history, right? It says the U.S. dollar occupies the position of the world's reserve money. Hence, countries monitor the monetary policy in the U.S. to guarantee to safety of their reserves as well as guide against inflationary effects. The U.S. dollar became the world's reserve currency in 1944. This was a result of the Bretton Woods Agreement in which 44 countries adopted the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. This agreement followed the significant position held by the United States in international trade. As at this time, the U.S. GDP represented 50% of the entire GDPs in the world. Considering the stability of the U.S. dollar, it was adopted as the official reserve currency so that it would aid the stability of other currencies. This agreement was signed in 1944, have a favorable effect on other currencies of the world. It says, also at this time, the dollar was, was gold-backed through foreign investments, but this did not last long. The U.S. government printed more dollars that were no longer backed by gold, but by its treasury debt. So every time they keep passing these spending bills, all right, they keep printing more money, that's more inflation and more debt that's being added on to the American government as well as other countries because other countries, they operate under the central banking system too, just like America. America's central bank is the Federal Reserve and all these other countries, they use fiat currency as well that comes from the central bank. So when they continuously, you know, pass these spending bills and print more money and have money in circulation, and now people is spending money that's not backed by gold anymore, now that adds on to the debt, all right? So now we understand those three things. We understand what is a reserve currency, we understand how it works, and we understand how the U.S. dollar became the world's reserve currency because all of this is going to play in the downfall of America, which is Babylon the Great, all right? And why is this so important? Because you have the BRICS nations, which BRICS, the B stands for Brazil, the R stands for Russia, the I stands for India, the C stands for China, and the S stands for South Africa. So now you have more than 30 countries that want to join the BRICS. And now they want to come up with their own currency in the form of um, CBDC that's supposedly going to be backed by gold or a currency that's backed by gold. And they don't want to use the American dollar that's been the world reserve currency since 1944 to do trade anymore. So now this is threatening the power and economy of the U.S. dollar. All right. So you got all these nations coming together that don't want to use the American dollar for international trade. All right. As well as to buy oil and to do business with internationally. So now. What's, what's going to happen to the American economy? How is this going to bring forth Jacob's trouble, right? So this is what this article is dealing with from barchart.com. And this is the title of it. It says, what if the U.S. dollar loses status at the, as the world's reserve currency, right? I'm just getting straight to the point. It says... If the U.S. dollar were to lose its reserve currency status, there would be a number of significant consequences, including a weaker U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is currently heavily reliant on the U.S. dollar status as the world's reserve currency. This is why most people in society, they don't care about what's going on with the BRICS nations. They don't care about, you know, what's going on in the news, alternative media, you know, things concerning Bible prophecy. Because it's not affecting them yet. Right? It says, losing this status would result in a decline in demand for the dollar. 
So now that you have the BRICS nations challenging the world reserve currency, which is the U.S. dollar, right? Now, that's going to end up weakening the dollar, all right? And you got all these people, they don't know what the hell is going on. That's why it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3 that there's going to be sudden destruction. When you read Luke, the 21st chapter, from verses 34 through 36, it tells you as a snare shall it come upon the whole world. Because people is not paying attention. They only care when they're going through the reality of the hardships, right? But they don't see it before it comes. Why? Because they don't take heed to the prophets. It says, which could lead to a depreciation of its value, meaning that the dollar is going to end up getting weaker to the point where it's going to be worthless. All right. And this is all done by design to bring forth the CBDC and the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant, because they're going to be compatible with each other. Right. It says this would make imports more expensive, meaning the imports is talking about how America, which is nothing more than a corporation, majority of the resources and goods and different products, cars, stuff of that nature, different materials, right? That people make money off of in their different stores and doing businesses, it will become more expensive to the point where they can't use the American dollar, which is going to make it get even more weaker. That's why the scriptures um, talk about in the book of Isaiah and plenty of other scriptures, Jeremiah, Revelation, how these immigrants that come over here, they open up their shops, all right? They come to America to better their lives. How they're going to go back to their country? Because they're going to realize, look, the American dollar is weak. We can't even inf uh, um, afford the imports from other countries. So let's go back to our country or let's just join the BRICS nations, right? So it says, this will make imports more expensive and reduce the purchasing power of U.S. consumers, leading to inflation and potentially a recession. So this is why it's important to know about this type of stuff, because this is going to help usher in Jacob's trouble. Remember, Jacob's trouble is a bunch of things happening simultaneously at the same time that's going to cause a global economic collapse so that they can bring forth a new system. And the day I'm talking about is who? The central bankers, the Rothschilds, the Schwabs, whatever the hell you want to call them. They are all from the same bloodline of Edom, the so-called white man and his seed. And this is their plan. All right. Let's keep it going. It says um, two. There's five points. I'm at the second one. It says a shift in global power because who's the number one superpower? America. And then who's number two? Russia. It's not a coincidence that Russia, you know, is a part of the BRICS nations and they got allies unto them, right? So it says a shift in global power. The U.S. position as a superpower is closely tied to the U.S. dollar's reserve currency status. So now you're starting to understand why this information is important to bring up. It says... Losing this status would reduce the country's ability to influence global affairs. It says, particularly in relation to economic matters, this could result in a shift in global power away from the U.S. and towards other countries, particularly China. And this is why Klaus Schwab, which Klaus Schwab, I'm going to keep on saying it, he's a Rothschild in disguise because you have a lot of Rothschilds that is operating under these different names, Mordecai, all right? Um, you know, Schwab, all these different names, right? So it says number three. So the point, the reason why I said that is because Klaus Schwab, he said that he wants the world to look at China as the blueprint, meaning he wants all these countries to follow after China because China, as well as Europe, they're at the top of this 2030 agenda. As far as fulfilling it, microchipping people, having a social, you know, um, credit system that's centralized, meaning that it comes from the central bank. Right. Let's keep it going. Number three, it says a reordering of international trade. The U.S. dollar status as the reserve currency 
has facilitated international trade for decades. And that's what caused the dollar to be so strong in the American economy to stay afloat this long, right? It says losing this status could result in a shift away from the dollar in international transactions, potentially leading to new trade blocks and economic alliances forming that exclude the United States. Got two more points. Number four, it says a rise in the cost of borrowing. As the reserve currency, the U.S. dollar benefits from lower borrowing costs. Losing this status could result in higher borrowing costs for the U.S. government, which could make it more difficult to finance the country's debt and could result in higher interest rates for consumers. So everybody bills would be more expensive, right? Like mortgage, for an example. Here's the last one. Number five. A change in investment flows. The U.S. position as the world's reserve currency has made it an attractive destination for foreign investment. Losing this status could result in a decline in foreign investment in the U.S., which could lead to a slowdown in economic growth. All right. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much it with that. Now, let's get into some scriptures. Because you got to understand these prophecies for yourself. You know, you can't just be, you know, parroting, you, you know, you have to understand these prophecies. True believers of Yahweh Shai, they will be able to link the current events with the Bible prophecies to understand the time period they're living in. Why? Because we're hastening the return of Yahweh Shai. This is um, Ezekiel in the NLT version, Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 19. It says they will throw their money in the streets. Y'all don't see what's going on with Venezuela from 2014 to now. The hyperinflation over there is so bad, the Bolivias, right, the Venezuelan money is worthless. They can't use that shit over there to buy nothing, all right? You can take a stack. I'm talking about multiple stacks of the, um, the Venezuelan Bolivias, and it'll still be under a dollar. They have to use American dollars over there in Venezuela. That's why that government... It's so messed up. Not to mention, you know, everything that's going on with their corrupted government as far as, you know, oil and stuff of that nature. Right. But the point is, the money is worthless. And that's what's going to happen to America. America will lose its reserve currency status. America will go through an economic collapse in the form of Jacob's trouble. All right. So the money is going to be worthless. I'm telling you, one day people are going to wake up. Your bank accounts is going to be locked, right? The money in your accounts is going to pretty much go to zero. And you're going to lose everything you got leading up to the hour of temptation, right? So it says they will throw their money in the streets. It's going to be worthless. You're going to be walking outside or you're going to be looking out the window and you're going to be seeing stacks of $100 bills, all different kind of bills, just blowing in the air. Why? Because it's worthless, hyperinflation, Right? It says, toss it out like worthless trash. Their silver and gold won't save them on that day of the Lord's anger. And that's referring to Jacob's trouble, right? It says, it will, it will neither satisfy nor feed them, for their greed can only trip them up. So that's the stumbling block. Because you have a lot of people in society, you know, they, they worship mammon, they worship money. And they'll do, they'll lower themselves, you know, morally in order to get the money. Just look at Hollywood. Look at what they got to do in Hollywood just to have their face on a billboard. You know, just to, you know, play as an actor in a particular movie everybody's familiar with. There's a lot of, you know, sexual rituals, a lot of blood sacrifices and wickedness in general, right, that people in Hollywood got to go through, as well as other high positions of these different companies right so this is going to happen so now let's get this this is isaiah 13 and 17 in the nlt version it says look i will stir up the medes against babylon now this happened in the past right but you can also apply it to today because who's operating the land of the medes the russians and the russians is a part of who the BRICS nations all right Remember, Russia is the second superpower after America. 
So it says, look, I will stir up the Medes against Babylon. Now, in this present time, where is Babylon? Who's, what country or what, what nation is Babylon the great? America, right? So the Lord is saying, I'm going to stir up the Russians against America. And they're doing that on all levels. It says, they cannot be tempted by silver or bribed with gold. And that's what's going on. That's why Russians are part of the BRICS nations. That's why the BRICS nations, they don't want to use the American dollar to um, do international trade and conduct in, um, international business. They don't want to do that. These nations are stepping away from America. And by them doing that, that's going to cause an economic collapse within America. America is going to turn into a third world country very soon. Let's get this back to the KJV. Uh, I really want to get this. No, I'll pass on that. I'm going to just end it with this. Back to the NLT. This is Jeremiah chapter 51. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 6. It says, flee from Babylon. Save yourselves. Don't get trapped in her punishment. It is the, it is the Lord's time for vengeance. He will repay her in full. That's why people is going to experience Jacob's trouble. America will experience an economic collapse and turn into a third world country. It says, Babylon has been a gold cup in the Lord's hands. A cup that made the whole earth drunk. Drunk how? Through the democracy, through the different philosophies, the westernization, the feminism, the sodomite agenda, right? So forth and so on. The spirit of do as thou wilt. You, I can make my own choices. I'm a God, right? That's the vibration America spreads. Wickedness. It says, he will repay her full. So like it says, the nations drink Babylon's wine. The different philosophies. What America is known for, right? It says, and it drove them all mad. And that's why these nations want to destroy Babylon the Great. Chiefly, Russia, Iran, and their allies. As well as the nations that supported the BRICS nations. That's why they don't want to use the American dollar to conduct international trade. Right? It says, but suddenly Babylon 2 has fallen. And we are, we are vastly or fastly approaching that point very soon. It says, but suddenly Babylon 2 has fallen. Weep for her. Give her medicine. Perhaps she can be healed. Now, what is that talking about? Saving the American economy. All right. You can't save the American economy. It's too far in depth. Once they removed the gold standard and the American dollar wasn't backed by nothing, it didn't have nothing to fall back on. So all this time, these people been deceived. They don't know that they're using fiat currency that's completely worthless. They don't understand what's going on concerning the BRICS nations. They don't understand what's going on. According to Bible prophecy, this place has to fall and it will fall. And there's different ways simultaneously that it is going to fall. Right? It says, we would have healed her if we could. If they could. They can't heal Babylon the Great. Why? Because that's not what the heavenly father Yahweh wants. Right? It says, but nothing can save her now. Let her go. Abandon her. So that's my point. These nations, these immigrants that come over here, they're going to realize, damn, you know, we made enough money. We can't afford to lose no money. You know, we can't afford to, um, you know, get imports from other countries. It's just too expensive. The hyperinflation is out of control. Let's get the hell out of here and let's go back to our country. We already made enough money, right? It says return now to your own land. And that's my point. For her punishment reaches to the heavens. But who, who runs Babylon the Great? The Edomites. All right. So that's what it's talking about. Her, her sins have reached unto heaven. For what they did to the children of Israel. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. It says, it is so great, it cannot be measured. So, Lord willing, you was edified by this lesson. Shalom.